When assessing whether a piece of content is harmful or egregious, IMDA will take an objective approach considering the context in which it is presented. If such content is educational in nature or helps users to overcome these harms, naturally it will not be considered harmful or egregious. On the other hand, social media trends or challenges may sometimes appear innocuous, such as the milk crate challenge Mr. Daryl David had mentioned. But if they result to harm to users, such as by advocating or providing instructions on self-harm or suicide, they would be considered harmful. If the concern is whether individual social media services have done enough to curb exposure to harmful content, the government will continue to consult widely across society and share the feedback with the companies. In other words, we would want to hold a mirror to them so that they know what our society's expectations are and be able to make adjustments accordingly. When urgent action is needed, such as to remove offensive content that advocates violence towards certain communities or could cause serious injuries to them, IMDA must be able to act fast. In such situations, consultations with stakeholders are better done as part of an after-action review. To Mr. Giam's question, if services are aggrieved by IMDA's regulatory decisions, they can appeal to the minister, and the minister's decision can also be challenged on judicial review. Mr. Giam and Mr. Pereira sought assurances that the bill will not be used to curtail democratic rights or freedom of expression. I stated in my opening address that IMDA does not have unfettered ability to issue new codes. The bill clearly sets out the purposes for which IMDA can issue these codes, which is recorded in Hansard. I would also like to remind members of the overarching purpose of the bill, and that is to provide a safe environment and conditions that protects online users while respecting freedom of speech and expression as enshrined in Article 14 of the Constitution.